This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. In the video that first I discussed the VMM, we created the virtual machine, but then to start and stop the virtual machine, we have to actually type a long command to get things uh, rolling. And that could be a bit inconvenient, especially if you are do dealing with the multiple virtual machines. So one may suggest that we can actually create a simple bash script, put the command in the bash script, and then basically get everything easy. But that's unnecessary because you have something better than that. And that one is the vmconf. So if you open the vmconf man page, it's mentioned that is a configuration file to configure the virtual machine monitor subsystem a vmm manager virtual machines on a host the vmm subsystem is responsible for creating destroying and executing vms and this vm conf divided to the four parts basically one is the macro definition so you can create the macro and reuse it or extend it further down the road in the file you can also have a global configuration on setting the general co whatever configuration that you wish for the vmd then also you have the VM specific configuration as well as the switch which is for the networking stuff so if we go for the macro for example this is the macro how you can define a macro and then how you can use the macro more or less this macro structure is applicable in any conf file on OpenBSD across the board and about the global configuration you can configure multiple things for example you can actually collect metrics you can set the network prefix in case that you don't want the ip of the let's say the vms start with the 100 whatever you can actually overwrite that one here we are not going to touch all this mu that much because they are usually in my perspective are unnecessary for a desktop user but if you want to run the vm in a gray in a larger scale let's say on server run multiple vms probably you need to actually hop on and then change all this stuff there and then the interesting part for us is the vm configuration the way that we configured the vm in the last video we didn't really play around with the networking that much as i think in my opinion is a bit unnecessary because you can just simply create the simplest easiest uh, to access the virtual machine that actually has capability to connect to the internet so the good thing about this configuration is that you can also apply who is going to be the owner and who can actually run a start to stop the instance on top of it you have this capability to set the vm to start automatically when the computer actually starts and that one all is done through the vmconf file and so the objective of this video is actually to create a simple vmconf file for the previous virtual machine that we have created and then go through the structure very quickly so i'm going to create a new tab here and then we go to the etc and then we start by creating a file called vm.conf and what we had previously was a debian 11 running so we are going to just to create that one so vm then we can pass the name of the virtual machine debian and then we have to open and close a curly bracket here the next thing that we can do is to set uh, how much memory we want to allocate so we can say memory let's say 8 gigabyte in this case and then we don't want the vm to start at the boot time so we set this one to disable if you don't specify this flag by default will be enabled and we can actually verify that one by going through the man page here there is a section enable automatically start the vm this is the default if neither enable nor disable is specified do not start this vm so we don't want the vm to start automatically and then what we want we want to actually specify the path where the image exists so we say disk this one obviously is a disk and then what we can say we can say let's say a slash home vm then the image and then we have to specify the network part because we want to we want the vm to connect to the internet and for that one we say local interface this part is the most let's say trickiest part because the configuration is almost endless you can 
do multiple setup. So if you go to the end of this section, we see that a local interface will auto-generate an IPv4 subnet for the interface configuring a gateway address on the VM host site and run a simple DHCP boot P server for the VM. This option can be used for layer 3 mode without configuring a switch. So this is the simplest way and I think this is also, in my opinion, for desktop users would be the best option. So we are going to opt for that one. So local conf and then the next section which is about the ownership so we don't want every time to when we want to run a start a stop the vm we don't want to type do as blah 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 we want a user to have a full control of the vm so in this case we set the owner and then basically pass the user as well as the group we are done almost with the changes if you are more interested you can go through this man page manvm.conf and I think the most interesting part of, about it is the networking part. Also, that at the same time, that's the most complicated part. Also, you have a VM instances that you can actually create a template out of it. So now we have done with the config file. So let's look at it. So this is our configuration file. The next step is to restart the VMD. So do as our CTL restart VMD. Afterwards, if we do vmctl status then we should see our vm is popping up here and this is the id and the status is stopped now what we can do we can start the vm without do as so vmctl start then one and then you see there is no do as involved here vmctl status so it is running and then basically i can just simply go to the vm here so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to take a moment to thank Patreon contributors, Grok with 30 generous dollars, Stellar Orbit with 20 generous dollars, OpenBSD Maximalist, Alexander M, Russell Willis, OpenBSD Enthusiast, DM'd, John Collins, and Liquid Mobius.